welcome back to Waxy O'Connor's. You saw it before with uh, Big Jack. We had such a good time, the Guinness was superb. We've popped in this time, we've, we've met another legend, Stevie Collins. <laughs> Stevie. You're just going to say, you're calling me a legend, I'm younger than you, remember that. Okay. Yeah, he's born in July, I'm born in January. <laughs> quite important for people to know that you've, you've you left Ireland to go to Boston yeah to start to start off your your career really you know yeah. and in the gym did you used to spar with uh, Hagler and people like that no um, first of all I, I went to the States because I, Marvin Hagler was a guy that I, I, that I looked I looked up to as a fighter I thought he was a great champion I said you know and I, could, I tried to relate to him when, when he boxed and I said I want to go where he was because if I can get involved with the people that prepared him and trained him and made him world champion they can do the same for me so I basically just found out where he lived, where he trained, and, and I, um, I got married. And uh, a week later, I was on a plane in front of America. But nobody, I knew no one over there, no address, no names, no nothing, no papers. And um, we just booked into a hotel, we got an apartment, and we just started working on the building sites. And then I, I went down to his gym and teamed up with his people. What do you mean you teamed up? You went in there and said, can I, can well, I, can I train? Well, first of all, I met him. I went to a show, there was a, there was a, um, a professional boxing show one, they had some fighters on the show, and I met a guy over there who was involved, who I knew from Dublin, and I asked him, would he introduce me to them, and tell them who I was, what I was, because I was national champion, amateur champion at the time, and you know, explain to them that I want to be a professional fighter. So I was introduced to, to a goodie Petronelli, he met me, you know, we had a few small words, he says, come down to the gym sometime. So about a week later, I arrived in the gym, and had all my stuff with me and I trained and they said, do you want to do a bit of sparring? So I said, yeah, I was all excited, you know, to be there. So Marvin Hagler's brother, Robbie Sims at the time, who was, you know, an up and coming uh, contender for a world title. They put me in the ring to spare him, you know, and um, you know, I was a bit naive then, but I, I, I realized very soon after the bell went that this wasn't a spare, this guy was out to do a number on me, you know. So it was going to rough you up? Yeah, well, I, what did, I understand now what happened. But what they were doing was they wanted to see was I going to waste the time or was I worth a while, you know, being invited to the gym or being brought down. Yeah. So this guy came out to do a number on me, but he discovered that he couldn't do a number on me. That was a bit more of a handful than he expected. And actually, I'd done quite well for myself, gave a good account of myself. And, and afterwards, they, um, they said, you know, you're welcome to join our gym anytime. They saw there was potential there. You know? And what would have happened if you hadn't have made it as a boxer? Would you have stayed there? Would you have come home? Would you have tried it in England? Um, I, I, I actually was enjoying my stay in America. I was, doing, I was quite popular. I was, I was successful. And uh, I was enjoying myself over there. And I was, I was settled, after four and a half years, I was settling in. I, I had American twangs when I spoke. I was becoming Americanized, you know. But the change for me was, I had two kids, I had a young daughter and a baby, my son. And um, I looked at American society. And I looked at the society I was brought up in. And for the sake of my kids, I said, there's no way I can stay in this country because it just didn't, it wasn't a place to bring up children, I thought. But on top of that, I wasn't happy the way my career was being managed because um, I was... You teamed up with Barney Eastwood, well, didn't you? Well, yeah, but it was... And then there was a big rail well, to follow that. No, no, there wasn't, not Barney, no. Well, whilst in um, America, I was US champ, I was getting great uh, TV viewing, so when I, was, I was doing great everywhere, except financially I wasn't making the money, so I knew something wasn't right. So I left America and uh, I came back to where... Uh, First of all, I came to Britain and I met with some people, and then I teamed up with Barney Eastwood in uh, Belfast. And uh, I spent a year and a half boxing out of Ireland. And then from Ireland, then I, I moved to London. And then eventually, then I, I got my, my title shot in '94 uh, for the middleweight how title. Do, how does somebody get a title shot, though, Steve? Well, it's, you have what's called ratings. So the more you win, the better level of opponents you beat, your ratings should move up. Now, that's in the ideal world. There's another way of getting ratings, and that's the give people backhanders and so on. But I got my ratings the, probably the proper way. The hard way. The hard way, yeah. You, have you ever had fights where you, you, you fight away and you think, come on, get going, get going. You're not, you, you're not 100%, get going, get going. And it, you know, like in football, sometimes it's easy to run. You can yeah. run all day. Another time you're thinking, well, oh, I feel a bit sluggish. That's where a team like, a Premier club like Wimbledon could lose to a first division club because they're saying, well, you know, we've beaten Manchester United by fluke. We've beaten Manchester United. That's his team, by the way. Man United's his team. We've beaten the great, Manche the great Manchester United t uh, team, right? And all of a sudden, they could be playing um, something like Manchester City. <laughs> the Gallagher brothers won't like this. 
And after having beaten Manchester United and you face a team like Manchester City who are not doing as well at the moment, you can go in relaxed and, and they're, you know, with an attitude like we're going to win this and go through the motions. And they're the matches you can lose. So sometimes in a fight, which is throughout my career, has happened. I've fought so called great fighters and looked very good beating them. And then I've, I've fought guys who went to my class and, and I've looked very ordinary against Struggle. them, you know. Because it's just, it's just I, sometimes I find it hard to get up for these fights. I need a challenge and I need an incentive. What, what do you think motivates Steve Collins to keep going in the ring? I mean, I asked, um, I've asked this to a lot of people, what motivates you to keep going? I mean, you must lie in bed sometimes with your missus and think about your bank account and have a little giggle. You know, you must giggle you, to oh, yourself yeah. and think, how has all this happened? Well, this has happened quite quickly, hasn't it? Although it's been well, hard. It's, it's, it's what you'd call, some people are successful overnight after 25 years of getting there, do you understand? You know, so I mean, I'm 11 years a pro, I'm moving into my 12th year soon. So although it's probably the last two years it's been very successful. I had my first fight 25 years ago. What motivated me in the beginning was um, to prove a point. I always wanted, I always believed to be world champion. I always said I would be, and that people wouldn't believe in the ridicules and so on. But I had, a, I had an inner belief inside that one day I'd be world champion. I always said I can beat these guys and I'd beat that guys. And I, sometimes foolishly I said it out loud and got ridiculed. But to get the opportunity to do it and win, it was so satisfying and so sweet to me. It's, it's, it's you know, the, the words cannot describe it, you know. And I've achieved more than I've ever set out to achieve. I've achieved much more than I ever wanted to achieve. And I'm still at the top. And everything I get now is a bonus. And um, really, I, I'm still improving. I'm still getting better at my game. And I'm still young enough. And, and I live the right type of lifestyle in training camp um, to go on for a number of, of years more. And, and what drives me now is I'm, I'm looking for. Um, I'm a glory hunter. I have to admit, I, I call myself a glory hunter. I well, love the we, glory. We, we all like winning. No, I love winning. Well, I, you know, I, I love the glory of being a world champion. I, 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 love, I mean, here I am talking to you on this program. If I wasn't world champion, I wouldn't get this. I love the glory. I love the attention. I love, I love the, the, the paydays I get, and uh, it's great self-satisfaction. I love the way my kids look at me. So you're, you're definitely gonna go for a few more years. Well, I, I'll go until. I can't go anymore, meaning if I meet someone who's better than me, genuinely, then I know it's over. And I, I you know, I've been looking for the people who were, I, I look for Eubank and he, he couldn't beat me. I look for Ben, he couldn't beat me. Twice I'm, each. Twice each, at both times. I'm looking for Roy Jones and if he doesn't beat me, you know, I'm going to have to look for somewhere else.